Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to pass data to an, in, uh, to an activity on Android through the use of an intent. We'll start by passing some primitives, uh, things like strings and ints. We'll look at how we can pass the state of an object, and then finally discuss a little bit about uh, passing by reference, which isn't really easy. So, to begin with, uh, what I've got loaded here is just what was left over from the previous demo um, on how to create multiple activities. So, if you follow the link in the description below, you'll be able to find the uh, video to show you how to get to this point. Uh, the basic overview is I've got two activities, a main and a second activity. Uh, the main activity, when I click on a launch button, is going to execute some code here, and the big thing it's going to do is it's going to build an intent, and then it calls start activity on that intent. Now there's two ways we could have built an intent. The sort of classic way, I'll say, is to simply build my intent here. So I'll say new intent. I specify who I am, so I'm currently on the main activity. And then I want to launch the second activity.class. And that will then sort of build me an intent to launch my second activity. But in the previous video I said that's not a great idea because it ends up uh, kind of getting out of uh, encapsulating the data. So we're going to use this other way of doing it. I've created this function called make intent. So let me go into that. I'm going to control click on this. And make intent, we can see down here, is currently, well, exactly the code I said we didn't want in the previous activity. And we'll see why in just a minute. So I'm going to let my second activity build the intent to launch it. And so I'm encapsulating the idea of of building an intent into that activity. So let me just launch this program in the emulator. And we can see here, first screen comes up, launch second screen, and here's the second screen. I click end, which is, if I go to my code, just going to call this finish button, removing that second activity from the stack, and going back to the first activity. If I press the back button, we're done. So let's talk about how do we actually get data into that second activity. Um, I'll just start by assuming maybe you've got some data like, uh, what would be an interesting one, uh, maybe just a string and an int to pass in. And maybe that represents whatever information you need to get in there. So let's go back to main activity here. And what we need to do is we need to encode that, in, that, I, the, that extra data into this intent that I'm building. So the way I'm going to do is pass it into this function here. So I'm going to pass in some string like Bob and a number like 101, which will be kind of a name and an age, say. Now it's telling me there's an error here because, of course, my function doesn't yet accept more than just the uh, context for the main activity. So let's go in here, go back to my code, and we say here I want to pass in a string. I'm going to call it name and int age. And what I need now is to build an actual activity intent, so I'm going to cut that, intent, give it the name intent, and return that intent. So just uninline that. Here I then want to add those two pieces of information, the name and the age, into my intent. So I'm going to say intent dot put extra. Now you'll note that I'm going to put in a thing that Android's calling the name of it, and then I can have a number of different ways of putting in an extra. So let me just kind of put extra. And we can see all the different things I can start to put in. A Boolean variable, a Boolean array, a bundle, a byte, character, and so forth. And way down here we'll find that there's a string or a string array. So I'm just going to go for a string. Now I've got to give it, the first thing is a name, not necessarily the name I've got here, this variable. I'm going to rename this to be person name. Person name, say just to keep it straight in our minds. It wants a name, and this is actually the name of the value as known by this activity. So I'm going to put in a string, in fact, here, and I'm going to put in my uh, package name, just to keep it unique, dot the activity name, second activity. And it really, this is sort of any string. It's going to a map that maps the string to a value. And so I'm going to put this in here as just a person name. It doesn't have to be that, I can be like, you know, the person name. Any unique string and person name. So this will, into my intent, stuff an extra. I'm going to control D to duplicate that line, and let's put it in here, the age. And I'm going to pass in age. And because this function is uh, overloaded in a number of ways, I can pass in the different types of primitives, or an array of primitives, and it will then encode it correctly for me. 
So now what I've got is back here on my first activity, I'm calling in make intent and I'm passing in all of the data that I want that other activity to know. Inside of the second activity, I'm going to encode all of that data that was passed into the intent. Now, this is a static function you'll note here, which means that I'm calling it without ever having an instance of my second activity. The Android OS is responsible for instantiating this activity class into an object and then making it an actual activity being displayed on the screen. So I am never going to call new on second activity. I'm going to let the OS do that through that start activity call. But of course what I need to do now is once I have been created and been given an intent, I need to extract the data from it. And so down here I'll add a new function in my onCreate. So I'm going to call it extract data from intent. Of course it doesn't exist yet, so I'm going to hit Alt Enter and say create method. And it'll then create it for me, avoid method is fine. Um, I can get the intent, so intent, intent equals get intent. It's a method that is provided by the uh, activity base class of my second activity. And then from this intent I can pull out the data. So I can say something like string uh, person name equals intent dot get extra. And uh, what do I want to do here? So pardon me. Uh, I want to say get uh, oh, get extra pull uh, yeah get get string extra. Pardon me. There it is. So uh, this will return me a value that is going to be a string. It's either return type listed over here. Uh, you can also get all of the extras and then work with the extras as an object on their own. We're just going to go with get them one at a time. So I'm going to get a, a string extra. And now here I have to pass in that same name I had down here. So I could just copy and paste it up to here. But that's starting to get pretty ugly with this sort of magic string floating around. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it into its own um, field in this class. So I'm going to right click on it and then go down to uh, sort of pull this up a little bit more. So I'm going to right click on this and then say refactor and I'm going to go to extract and I'm going to say I want to extract a constant. And I give it a name, I'm going to call this one extra name. And I'm going to do the same thing and then we'll see what it did here. Is it put it up here at the top? It created this public static final extra name. I'm going to do the similar thing here with the next string. I'm going to refactor, so right click, refactor, extract, and constant. And I call this one extra uh, age. Now the one thing I'm going to do is I don't want these to be public. I don't want to leak out information as to what I'm kind of trying to pass in and how I'm storing things. So I'm going to make this private. Respecting encapsulation as much as I can. So now down here it wants to know the name of this thing. So it's extra, I want the extra name. And I can say something like int age equals intent dot get int extra of extra age. And so now I've pushed the data in down here and I'm pulling it out up here. The one funny thing is that my get int extra wants to have an added additional argument, which is what default value to use if there was in fact no value. So I'm just going to say zero. Now once I've got all this information, what do I want to do with it? I could just print a log to the screen. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into, let's stuff it into a, well, maybe make it a state. So we'll save it. String, we'll call this one name. And I want a int age. Let's make them privates. So these are fields inside of my activity. And I'll just say here, name. And so we'll just pull them out into these fields. And then I can do anything I want with them throughout my code. Um, one thing I'm doing is I'm setting up this button that's going to be on the screen. So let's just make the button text change. So button dot set text. And I'm going to have something like name equals name age equals, I'll just put that data back on the UI, age. So now when I run my code,
When I click Launch, Second Activity, it's going to stuff the data, pass the data into it, build up the intent, and pass that data in. Inside my second activity, we come down here, we are going to extract data from the intent, and then we store it into a, uh, the fields, and then use those fields as we see fit, as shown here. So that allows us to get data into the activity, and we did not expose any of how, the details on how we did that. We encapsulated it into our object by having this make intent. And so if we need to later, for example, accept a third parameter, say a double of uh, height, we don't need to change other classes much. We simply need to add a new extra here and encode it locally. We change our extract and our add data to the intents, and we're sol we've solved that problem. Now, this is just for passing primitives. Very often you want to pass something a little bit more complicated, like an object. And it turns out that's rather complicated. So the extra itself, as down here, putting an extra in, the versions that we have, I think we go control P, it'll show me all the values here I can pass in. I can pass in a whole bunch of primitives, but I can also pass in a bundle, or a serializable object, or a parcelable object. All of these are different ways of generating an object from some sort of you know primitives like we're doing here. It is not possible to pass a reference to an object, like a Java reference. You can't simply put a reference into an existing object. So what I can do is if I wanted to maybe pass in a, um, a simple object, let's go ahead and create one. So I'm going to right click here on my project, say new Java class, and we'll call this one pet rock. Here's my pet rock, I'm going to give it a private string, we'll give him a name, and we'll give him an int, we'll give him an age too. Mirror data from before, just to keep it simple. Um, I could go through and write all the code for this, I'm just going to get uh, IntelliJ to do that for me, or Android Studio it is. So I'm going to build myself a constructor, so I hit Alt Insert, and it then comes up, let me do that again just for completeness. I hit Alt Insert on my keyboard, and I say I want to generate a constructor. I can select what private fields I wish to have in my constructor, except, and there I've got the basic default constructor. I'm also going to do the same thing, Alt Insert, and do a getter and setter. And then we've got the sort of plain Jane getters and setters. So back here in my main activity, let's change it instead of me passing in Bob and 101 here, I'm going to create a new pet rock. Pet rock, let's call it Rocky, equals new pet rock. And I give it some data. So let's make this uh, Charlie, and age is uh, 56. And so now instead of me passing in the data fields individually, I'm going to pass in an object, sort of. Of course, I have to go through and change my function over here in my second activity. I'm no longer accepting individual primitives. I'm taking in a pet rock. We'll just call this one the rock, rock here. In order to kind of fix the code here, I don't want to use person name. I'm going to use rock.getName. And the age is no longer passed in that way. It's now rock.get. There we go. So now we've taken an object from over here, pass the object in, and all of the data that I need inside of my second activity I am stuffing into primitives. Now up here I can say well this could be replaced by a pet rock, so let's do that. So a private uh, pet rock, let's call it my rock, and I'll delete those two, and we can see here all the places my code needs to change. So what I really want to do is get the extras from the intent, and then I'm going to build a pet rock. So pet rock, oops, I need to say uh, my rock equals new ro pet rock, passing in the name and the age. Each of these has to be defined, so this is a string, and this one's an int. And the last thing to do is actually use that object inside of my activity. So I can say here my rock dot uh, get name. And instead of the age as being a global or meth, uh, member value, I'm going to say my rock dot get age. Okay, so that's all the data coming in. 
Let's rerun the program to make sure it still works. We should see no actual change here, just instead of passing in primitives to my intent, I'm now working in the level of objects. So I'm going to launch, and we see here now we're in Charlie 80, uh, 56. I'll click on that, we go back to the previous, previous um, activity. Now one temptation you might want to be thinking about here is, what if I were to change the pet rock inside of my second activity? I don't I would then maybe think I'm updating the real pet rock. What if I was trying to make my second activity rename my rock and have that change uh, trickle back to my main activity? It's not actually going to work. So what's going on here is we have pulled out the data from the rock and put it into the intent. And then we've pulled out the data from the intent and put it back into a new rock. And in fact, you can tell it's a new rock because I said new pet rock. And so these are going to be identical objects, but they are at different points in memory. So they are different objects. So they are uh, individual, they are unique. So any change I make to my pet rock, my rock here in the second uh, um, activity, will not be reflected on the previous activity. So I can kind of show you that. Um, when I click the button, it's an easy place to put it. I'm going to change this. I'm going to say set name. And we'll set the name here to... Uh, um, something like Zoda, uh, Zoda. So now what would happen is I'm trying to rename my rock at the end of this uh, activity, but I'm just doing it on the local copy. If I go back to my main activity here, uh, when I click on the button, for example, just another easy place to put it, I'm going to put a log message in, log D, uh, my activity, and then I need to pass it in what I want to do. So uh, Rocky's name is, and I need to gain access to Rocky, so let's make him global. Private. So I'm going to gain access to Rocky is Rocky.getName. So now when I click the button on the first activity, I should see Rocky's name. That data is then encoded into an intent and passed to the second activity. The second activity pulls the data out of the intent, makes a new pet rock. At the end, it will change the data in the pet rock, but it's only the copy that gets changed. So let's see what happens. I'm going to run this. I need to also bring up the log cat, and I made that log message here with my activity. So let's put that here in the filter. My activity. So when I click this, we'll see down here, uh, name is currently Charlie because I started off with my pet rock being named Charlie. On the second activity, we've regenerated a new rock. When I click this, it tried to change it, but we get back to the first one. When I click it again, we see that the name is still Charlie. So the change on the second activity does not carry back to the first activity. Um, so this was done by sort of, it's like I'm passing by value. In fact, I'm generating my own new copy of my rock inside my second activity. Uh, down here, the change was I'm passing in the, the object, and it feels like I'm kind of passing it in, but it gets duplicated or kind of cloned effectively. Other things I could have done, I could have made Rocky, or my pet rock class here, I could make it kind of support the ability to um, put itself into the extra and pull itself out of the extra. At the moment, my second activity has to do that for me. That's not quite as good. So I could do things like supporting serialization or parcelable. And those are probably the better ways to do it, but a little bit more complex solution. Now the last question you might have is, what if I actually need to pass into the second activity a reference to the object? I need to work with the real object here. Maybe I can't duplicate it or something like that. And the answer is you really can't do that with an intent. What you would want to switch to is probably using a singleton pattern. So the singleton design pattern. And that pattern would allow you to uh, sort of ask a class to give itself, give you an instance of that class and have it only one instance possible. So look up the singleton design pattern, uh, which you could apply to kind of your data model inside of an Android activity. Then each of your activities would call get instance on that uh, singleton and be able to access the object directly. Okay, thank you for watching.